Yo boys, what's going on? Willie here. Super excited to bring you today's video, which is actually going to be a different type of video. I've never done one of these before. We're going to be spectating the man, the myth, Pants R Dragon. If you guys don't know, Pants R Dragon has recently been doing an Udir only account. Um, and needless to say, he's rank, what, 28 right now? 700 LP playing pretty much primarily Udir. Um, and the dude's got a 70% win rate. This is a really, really clean account. Um, I'm going to be honest, I'm a little bit jealous of it. Um, I haven't had an account this clean in a long time. Last season, I did a run up to about 400 LP with like a 65% win rate, but getting up to 700 LP, almost 700 LP, 699 LP, same thing, right? Um, with a 70% win rate on Udyr, that's really, really impressive. So without going forward, you know, or without going any further, I do want to say this is an impressive account. Um, this is something I have not ever been able to do. He's already passed my peak rank. Um, and quite frankly, he's maintained a higher win rate than me this season, right? Um, so he's doing something right, right? The first thing I want to notice, you know, is he has been duoing a little bit with Fui. Um, Fui, if you guys don't know, is a pretty infamous uh, talent player. He's like a booster. I think he got in trouble for win trading as well last season. But either way, he's a really talented uh, uh, talent player. You know, he's one of the best, if not the best, in North America. So he has been doing a little bit. But, you know, as of late, he started doing solo, which is even more impressive. And, you know, even the solo games, like, he's popping off, right? These, these aren't games where he's just getting carried. We're looking at 9-0, and 11-4, and 9-5, and 6-4. and 4. Is that 0-5? and 5? That's 0-5. and 5. Whoops. 6-0. and 0. You know, he's playing really, really well. Um, he's taking Conqueror. This is the same rune page I run pretty much every single game. Um, and what I'm going to do today is I'm actually going to spectate one of his solo games. We're going to watch the 6-0 and 7 game. I actually already have it pulled up here. Um, I'm actually going to get rid of the webcam so we can focus on the gameplay a little bit. Um, but this is a 6-0 game. This is the game he played uh, just an hour ago, actually. And I want to see how he's playing Udyr, right? So strike one, he doesn't have fucking an Udyr skin. Default Udyr. Someone put a mature content on this uh, on this video. But he doesn't have a Udyr skin, which is driving me crazy. But I want to see what he's doing, what his clear path looks like. Um, because I can tell you right now, man. Let me turn the sound down just a little bit so the ping volume isn't so loud. Um, but I can tell you right now, man, the clear path that I generally been spamming this season, especially at higher yellow, is Blue Gromp. I think that's just the go-to for Udyr. It's just way too efficient. Um, it's interesting that he stands here level one. I usually stand over here level one whenever I'm going for this pixel ward. I guess he, you know, I stand over here for probably the same reason he's standing here. He wants to know if the enemy team walks up into his red side jungle. Because as a jungler, like, as long as you're not doing a level 1 invade, the best thing you do is protect it. So he actually uses the level 1 trinket on this bush. I usually put it here, but I guess this bush is better because it'll let you know quicker if the Jarvan is doing a red 2 a red to scuttle start because that's really really popular another thing that jarvan does is he tends to do red straight up to mid lane so looks like pants is opting for a a blue buff start he got the double dot off um i'm curious why he's not kiting it towards the gromp a little bit okay this is actually a sl slight misplay um, this is something that I do or I used to do a lot um, But when you're doing the blue buff you don't if you have to switch into tiger um, Did he even need to switch into tiger here? Okay, he did not need to refresh his tiger first off. He should have just autoed it once normally um, So he didn't need to go into tiger there But if you do have to go into tiger for that last auto attack You don't want to run over to your gromp immediately in bear stance because you end up slapping it like three times in bear stance You want to be cycling turtle as much or tiger as much as possible. So that's a slight misplay on the clear there um, It's interesting. He went for that, but I don't know if he just knew how much he damage he did It's interesting that he doesn't so he walks up with Tiger ready here, acting like he's going to auto-attack the Gromp or the, yeah, the, the Crab or whatever this thing's called. You generally want to bear slap it first because that gets rid of the armor and the magic resist. This should just be a kill here. I don't think Jarvan's getting out. Udyr still has flash, right? Didn't even need to flash. That was actually really smart of the pants to hold on to flash. I probably would have panicked flash, not taking into account that my Galio is here. Like, I'm going to be honest, even watching this VOD, I didn't see Galio until it was too late. wonder what Galio is doing here. Is that just a little bit of lag or what? Interesting. 
I don't know what that was. So Pants does blue Gromp. He tried to gank mid Annie bot, not on Annie go next. <laughs> but it's interesting that he didn't go for the crab before going for this gank. Because kind of how I view it, man, is if you go for this gank and it messes up, you're giving Jarvan a free crab. I would have gone for crab before going for this. Maybe that's the difference between me and Pants. He prioritizes laners over getting crabs. Nice stun on the Silas there. That was really good pathing of him to stand over here. A lot of people, like, when they gank, um, and this is honestly, like, I know this seems like something little, but this is literally the difference between a Challenger player and a Diamond Udyr, is a lot of people would walk straight to Silas here. The fact that he pathed over here and then curled back into the Silas, like, the micro positioning there was really, really good from Pants. It's a good gank for sure. So he did, Jarvan did end up getting the crab while Pants was dealing with, uh, this is, see, this is interesting, but he, Jarvan did pick up the crab. This is interesting that he's starting the blue buff, because when you start blue buff, you're pretty much committing to taking, losing 300 health, right? Because when you, when, in order to cycle, fully cycle a blue buff, it's going to take 300 health and it's going to use all your mana. So imagine if Jarvan did not go for this gank, right? The only reason this works is because Jarvan... Jarvan went for the top gank, right? Maybe Udyr might think that Jarvan's on his red buff. But, like, I feel like he could have gotten punished so hard for going for that. Because he's out of mana. Like, if Jarvan was walked here, EQ'd into the bush, Udyr just dies there. Or he has to burn flash, right? Get a double dot ready. Okay, this is another mistake. He should have sat here with a double dot. Whenever you're going for bush cheeses like this or like vision cheeses, you want to sit in tiger. You want to tiger dot them, bear slap them, and then go back into tiger. So that way um, you get two dots off. And on top of that, it, uh, it, what are you, you don't have mana for tiger. Okay. I mean, he gets the kill. He recognizes that Jarvan doesn't have a flash and the EQ is on cooldown. But I don't know if I would have flashed blind over the wall there. That's really interesting from Pants there. It's like honestly like really weird jungling from both from both from both uh Jarvan and Udyr. I'm not I don't want to rewind too much here, but like like I said, the only reason this blue buff works, so I guess so if we're I, I turned off fog of war, right? So let, let I'm just trying to jump back 15 seconds here and explain this. So he gets the kill on top, right? I'll speed it up a little bit so we don't have to rewatch this. He gets the kill on top. He sees Jarvan did the crab, and the blue buff is up, right? Udir right now doesn't know where Jarvan is. So I would assume if I was in Udir's position, I would assume either Jarvan is on his Gromp, on his Wolves, or on his red buff. I don't think that Jarvan would openly invade. The red buff of of the Udyr because he could get super far behind if he did that. I mean, I guess they can go for the blue buff because they have mid priority, but this is still really really sketchy to me. I guess the reason he went that in hind he went for that in hindsight is because of mid priority and he knew Corky would rotate for him. Oh, he's duo with the Saranok. Okay, Saranok is his other duo buddy. They play a lot of games together. Okay, so he's probably in voice comms with the Corky. That's why he knew he could do that there. In solo queue, I would never have done that, though, because I wouldn't have trusted my mid lane to rotate. And once again, he literally, like, if we just rewatch this last thing, he literally flashes into no vision, right? Because we see Jarvan with the EQ. What if Jarvan EQs and walks up here, right? What if Jarvan walked this way into the tower? Like, I don't know. I don't, I don't like that he flashed blind. I would have just left here and gone, or at least gone to do the crab, or the gromp, rather. That's really, really interesting that... Pants gets away with that. So, after he gets these kills, he ends up eating the... He ends up eating the... Wolves. I don't know why he's not circling Turtle more. If he plans on farming more, he needs to cycle Turtle. Or if he plans on ganking, doubles Tiger cycling is fine. If he doesn't plan on ganking. But he could have gotten 200 health back between the Wolves and the Gromp if he cycled Turtle instead of Tiger. It's interesting that he goes top to push this in. Unless they want to dive, but even then, he just leashed so much XP off the Jace, and the wave was pushing back to Jace. Like, look at how the wave was before...
Pants walks in and starts auto-attacking, right? Silas completely fucks up the wave by standing here, dragging this melee minion out. So all these minions here cluster up. And that means now they're all going to focus on the Jace, and then they're going to push back into the Jace. That's favorable for the Jace, right? And the lane was frozen here, which means it's going to push naturally. That's favorable for the Jace, because in this matchup, when he has a lead, he can bully the Silas so hard. But instead, Pants shoves it in. I wonder if there's, like, I'm just being an... I might just be an idiot here. But I don't know why he would shove that in. Like, you want the wave, because... Especially against Jarvan, Jace is really susceptible to getting ganked. That's interesting that Pants opted to shove that in there. Like I said, that might be something I need to look to do, but I I, I don't know. I need to really get in a voice com with Pants and ask him why he did that, because I, I don't understand. So, Udyr finally goes and does his red buff, right? He passed straight by. This is really smart of him not to do Raptors and Krugs. This is something a lot of low elo junglers do that I've noticed, is you don't actually need to be farming your jungle camps if you have enough gold, right? So, he already had enough gold for a perfect back, pretty much, besides... He could have gotten a Warrior Enchant on the first back, but I think getting boots is better. Um, so, he eats... So he buys the Warhammer boots, he eats the wolves, he's eating the crab. And then after this, I would look to gank bot, but I'm going to be honest, we just saw Jarvan bot. Jarvan has nothing to do. Um, so he's. Pr I wouldn't be surprised if Jarvan was here, here, or here, waiting for a lane gank. So Pants needs to be wary of that, and they don't have the wave. It's smart of him to pull out because let's see where Jarvan is. I'm just going to take a stab here. Jarvan's actually not on the lane gang. That's funny. Jarvan literally went back to base. If I was this Jarvan, I would have been sitting in one of these bushes waiting for the Udyr to gank. Okay, so he's playing around the vision. He goes for the dragon. I'm going to be honest, with mid-priority like that, with Corky moving into the topside jungle, like look where Corky was 15 seconds ago, I would have looked to cheese the Jarvan on this red buff is what I would have looked to do. Because if 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 Pants stands here and gets the dragon and Jarvan doesn't contest it, the only place Jarvan could be is topside. So you we would know to ping the Jace back and to also be aware that Jarvan could be eating our topside camps. And even if even if Jarvan does show here, it's probably a free red buff, even with the bot lane having priority. Because as soon as the bot lane backs out of vision and comes to help the Jarvan, they just walk to the Blast Cone and Blast Cone into the pit. I would have tried to contest this, if nothing else, for the information alone, because we would know where Jarvan is, right? Because if Jarvan is not on the red buff, right, he would have been up topside. But he turns out he did path to the red buff, but I don't know. Like I said, there's a lot of information value there I would have gone for. So instead, Pants dra Blast Cones into the Dragon Pit, goes for the Dragon... I mean, that's fine and all. I don't know if I would have sacrificed my tempo to get to get an early ocean dragon, but I guess it's good, especially if he's handing off the blue buff. This is something I definitely don't do that I probably sh Really, he didn't give that to the Corky. Interesting. That is something I definitely would not have done if I was in this elo. Is I, like, I mean, I am in challenger elo. I wouldn't have given... Or even thought about giving my mid laner blue buff if I was this far ahead. But maybe that is something I should look to do more. I don't know. So Pants passed topside. Crab is coming up in about 30 seconds. So if I was Pants, I would do Raptors straight down to bot Crab. Let's see what he does instead. He ups. It looks like he just pinged on the way to the Gromp and Wolves. Because he knows the rubber band is coming up. So he's going to go at least check on the jungle camps it looks like. Replay features bugged. Even though we can see on the minimap the camps are down, Pants doesn't actually know if they're down or not. Okay, so he gets a nice free pink ward. That's good and all. That's really good because Jarvan has used two pink wards this game, win behind, so that's an extra 150 gold. The Jarvan is behind. It's a waste of red smite. You never want to red smite a Jarvan unless you know it's going to be a kill because, let's be honest, boys, Jarvan has a free get-out-of-jail-free card. That's really, really smart of Pants to walk here to stop the back. But it's borderline int because I don't know if he can actually get that kill. I don't know. But that's smart. If Vigo just held onto the back, he would have been fine there, I think. But delaying the back was pretty good by Pants there. That was good map awareness of him to recognize to walk mid there. 
This is something that I definitely need to improve on. I don't watch lanes enough, especially when I'm streaming. I'm too focused on Twitch chat. He walks mid. It looks like he's going to pick up the free 80 gold. Nice 80 gold from the turret plate. Split 160 split between him and the Corky, but 80 gold apiece. So Jarvan now is tied up mid lane, which means he has complete priority over this gank. This is a free gank for the Udyr. Um, Jarvan, no matter what, would be 10 seconds behind, even if he walks straight bot, but he has he's not even walking bot yet. This is a slight mistake from Udyr. I'm not going to judge him too hard, though, because I make this mistake all the time. Um, you want to walk to where they're potentially flashing, not to where they are. So Udyr definitely could have held on to his flash here. It's all right, though. I make that mistake all the time. It's, just, it's only natural to just chase um, what's in front of you and not predict, you know? Picking up more turret plates. He's doing a good job of prioritizing. I played against Tarzan two or three times today, and Tarzan has been doing this a lot too, and this is something I need to be looking for, is these guys heavily, like, my whole thing, man, is I don't know if I would have stayed for these two plates, because Kaisa and Galio would have been able to get those two plates even without Udyr being there, right? I would have probably just gone and started eating my jungle and got ahead in tempo again, but most of the jungle, like, just look what Pants is doing. This is something that I don't do nearly enough. He shoved in top wave earlier with the Jace. He shoved in bot wave, got a couple of turret plates. Went mid earlier, got another turret plate. And then he helps the Corky push in. So that way Corky can get a safe back. Because Corky's probably looking to get a uh, Triforce component or boots here. His Phage is what he looks like he picks up. He pushes mid in. And that also gives him mid priority. Which means that he can go straight to this Rift Herald. Because he also has top priority. Right? Quirky picks up the package as well, so if Jarvan even tries to contest this, this is free. This is something I definitely would not have done. I would have been eating my jungle right now. So the bottom line, like one thing I'm actually learning a lot from this is I just need to be more active on the map. Because this is something I just don't do nearly enough of. And then he pops Rift Herald straight mid. I don't know if I would have been that aggressive. He doesn't even stay for the plates. It looks like he's just trying to give Quirky a free 300 gold. Look, Corky got 160 gold. This will be another 300 here. Corky, Udyr, just by walking mid, acknowledging the fact that he had mid top priority, picking up Rift and dropping Rift Herald mid gets a bunch of tempo, and on top of that, gives his Corky a free 300 gold worth of turret plates. He literally just gave his Corky a free kill. So we see a scrap happening, but pants pass straight there. I don't know if Udyr will actually be able to do anything in this scenario, but I want you guys to notice this is something I don't do for sure, but notice how long he has not been in his jungle. It has been a solid four minutes without Pants being in his jungle. This is something I am not doing nearly enough of that I am honestly just going to start doing like the next game I play. Is just being way more active on the map. Because the thing with this season, and this is a big reason why Udyr is so strong right now. Like, Udyr is actually pretty meta at the moment. Um, the big reason why Udyr is so strong is not only does Conqueror work really well on him. But on top of that, like, Udyr doesn't actually need levels to be a strong champion. He just needs items, right? So as long as you're picking up the XP in the lane and getting kills and gold everywhere, right? Like, it's not actually that big a deal to not be farming on Udyr. And that's something, like, I'm still playing Udyr as if I'm in Season 8, right? I mean, my playstyle last season was literally just power farm. And then once I get Warrior Enchant, I look to Tower Dive pretty aggressively with Flash. But Pants has literally just been living in the enemy jungle. And all he's controlled every crab this game. Got a 10-minute Rift Herald. Got both dragons. He's, he's playing the map very, very well, and his macro is, like, on point this game. Another thing he's been doing is he's been following the Jarvan around the map, just, like, predicting where the Jarvan is going rather than sitting in his jungle. And even if he doesn't know where the jungle is, he pokes his head into the enemy jungle to see where the jungle camps are, like when he ate the raptors a little bit ago. Um, you know, he's just constantly poking his head in the river and in the enemy jungle to see where the enemy jungle is. One thing he hasn't been doing that I do a lot that I think Pants could actually learn from me. I know. Imagine that. Pants learning from me. Someone 300 LP higher than me learning from me. But uh, I think he needs to swap the Oracles. I think he could have, you know, swapping the Oracles when you're winning this hard is really good. That was really, really smart, actually, for Pants to put the dot on the Jarvan instead of the bear slap. Because the bear slap wouldn't have gone through. 
Because you can't bear slap if Jarvan's in the middle of an EQ. That was pretty smart of him there. I don't know if he did that on purpose, but well played. A little bit over overstepped by Pants here. But I mean, feels Udyr, man. Like, it's only natural. Like, one misstep by Udyr and you're going to get caught. They almost killed him here if it wasn't for the ADC's heal. Okay. <laughs> this is really, really bad micro by Pants. I'm not laughing at him. I'm just laughing at, like, how... Like, I don't know. You can just tell that Pants is kind of newer to Udyr because there's a... If you guys don't know, when you switch to a new stance with Udyr, it completely refreshes your auto attack. So you kind of have to dance with the auto attack reset. So watch what he does here. As soon as he slaps somebody in bear slap, goes straight into Tiger right now. Right? It's off cooldown, I guarantee. Even though there's a, there's a timer in between each um, stance... There's a timer in between each stance. You know, after you press bear stance, you have like one second before you can switch to another stance or whatever. Um, but it's already off cooldown. Switch to tiger. What he does here is he tries to auto attack in bear and then he goes into tiger. So then he resets his auto attack. Yeah, I don't like the micro there at all, but it's okay. But for those of you that don't know how Udyr works, whenever you're switching into a new stance, make sure not to refresh the auto. The aggressive flash onto any bot. Interesting. This will be a kill for Udyr. Okay, when Jarvan is in his bubble. Okay. All right. Slight misplay here. Here's another thing he could have looked to do different. When Jarvan's in the bubble, he needs to stand on the bottom side of the Cataclysm here to zone the Soraka out. Right? Stand right here. Zone Soraka away. Chase Jarvan under tower. Dot him and put a... Stun him. Put a dot on him. Another thing he could have done is saved his bear stance to walk through uh, the minion wave because the bear stance gives you unit collision. Or no unit collision, rather. Eats the Jarvan blue. It's good of him to recognize that that shit's up. Takes it. I mean, he's just playing jungle so much. Like, he's playing the map so much better than I would be if I had a lead. This is like, I'm low-key. Like I said, I'm taking notes out here because he's playing a lot differently than I would play. He's doing a really, really good job of abusing. I don't know if this Jarvan is auto-filled or a meta-slave, but Jarvan is... Literally just, you know, Pants is reading him like a book right now. So I'm definitely, like, taking notes on kind of how to play when ahead. Because it's something I, I'm not doing well enough. And you can tell in my gameplay, man. If you just watch any of my VODs, um, this is stuff I just don't do when I'm ahead. Good night, Poe Belter. Red Smite a little late there. It's all good, though. I'm nitpicking just because, like... I don't know. When I watch my own VODs, I nitpick my own shit. If y'all want, I could do a VOD review of myself someday. Like, I know it seems like I'm being an asshole, but I literally nitpick myself, right? It's the only way to improve. Rip Jarvan. Micro, the orb walking, a little messy here, but he still gets the kill. Good job of him to recognize that. When Jarvan uses his EQ like that, he tried to Q the thing, and then he used his E on the Udyr. Jarvan is completely on cooldown. You can just chase him there. This game's honestly looking pretty free low. The only way they lose this game at this point is if they get a Baron throw or if Pants literally just runs it down five times. Another thing he's doing really well this game is he's protecting his 1,000 gold bounty. That's something I've actually gotten a lot better about, I'd say. That was a big goal for me in Season 9 was getting better about protecting my bounty and not being an idiot and running it down. He's doing a really good job of just only going for the safe plays and making sure, you know, his teammates die and not him, which is really, really important when you have a bounty. Just see, even Pants just being here, instead of farming his jungle, zones the enemies off this tower, which means they get a free tower. Like, I think I'm just massively overestimating how much farm is actually worth this season. He's just not playing jungle he's playing walk around simulator and this is something that i need to get better about and this is you know uh 
Tarzan played Pantheon against me earlier today, and this is pretty much how Tarzan played. Was just pretty much walk around simulator, and you know that's something that uh, you know I could I could take away from this because at the end of the day, he's got a higher win rate with me on my champion, and that that that's fucked up, right? I'm the king of Udyr. Pants should never pass me, and I can tell you right now, my micro is way better than this guy on Udyr. But he just plays the game so much better than I play the game. Right? So I just need to, like, learn from this. Because, you know, now that... I, I didn't even know Pants was this high elo. Now that I know that he's 700 LP with my champion, I got no excuse, boys. I'm going to start sweat shopping out high elo again. I used to play, like, 10 games a day in high elo. I might have to start doing the same thing again. I've been smurfing a lot, getting a lot of my accounts up. He's waiting for Corky. This is good of him to wait on Corky instead of just running in. Focus. I don't like that he's focusing the Lucian. I would have focused Soraka here. It's good of him. He's dancing pretty well with him here. But at this point, Udyr is just so far ahead. He's like three levels ahead of them. It doesn't really matter how he plays it. Unless he literally just walks in a straight line at them, he never dies there. I'm just going to speed this up because I'm pretty sure at this point it's just GG. Once again, he's not eating any jungle camps. He's just shoving waves. I just go back and rewatch this video and notice how many jungle camp, how long Pants' jungle camps are up. He's just not farming his jungle at all, and that's something that I'm definitely doing way too much of. Once again, still not eating any of his jungle camps. Still eating the Jarvan. Putting on Baron pressure at this point, he's going to go ahead and start it, Omega Lol. Alright. Yeah, I was going to say, at this point, it looks like they just get Baron and end. Get Baron. And then run it down, it looks like. Yeah. GG goes bot. Dances with him, puts the Baron pressure up, and then they end the game. And that's that, lads. Holy frames. <laughs> that's that. So, like I said, big takeaways from this video. I do want to say, I know I'm being very critical of Pants, and I'm, like, you know, talking a little bit about, you know, myself. But I do want to say congratulations to Pants. The account is very, very, very impressive. Low-key jealous of it. Um, you know, I, I, I basically, I'm going to be watching his VODs a lot more off stream and trying to figure out what he's doing that I'm not doing. Right. Um, because he does have a very impressive count. He's playing jungle a lot cleaner than me. He's abusing leads a lot better than I am. Um, and he's doing a really, really good job of choking the enemy jungle and making them feel like, uh, you know, making them feel as if they have no comfort. Right. Basically, he's making the enemy laners have to rotate, and if he gets a winning laners, then it's just over. Because if then if the enemy laners rotate, then they're gonna miss even more gold and XP under tower. So um, he did get blessed in that sense. He did have three winning lanes this game. Um, I think bot lane was the only shaky lane he had, um, but he did get blessed with three winning lanes, and he's also duo queued with the Corky. So he did have that going for him. But regardless, well played by him. Um, I definitely am taking notes out here. So uh, thank you guys, guys so much. By the way, we just hit 10,000 subscribers. Thank you guys so, so much for the support. Um, if you want to see more content like this in the future, definitely let me know. Um, I can do another Panzer Dragon game review or I can start reviewing other Udyr players in the world. Um, because there are different Udyr players around the world that are building Udyr different than me right now. Um, and, you know, I could, I could, you know, watch a few of those games and let you know, guys know what I think. So thank Thank y'all so much for watching. I'll uh, catch y'all in the next one, and thank y'all so much for being here.